Good afternoon, sorry, uh, viewers. I'm very pleased this afternoon to be joined by Brigadier Mark Phillips, our Prime Ministerial candidate, and of course, your next Prime Minister, as we address the latest development in relation to the de declaration of the results based on the recount. <clears throat> I know all of you would have been following the events over the last four months, but more particularly since the CCJ would have ruled. Indeed, this is <clears throat> a time of great trials for us as a nation and as a people. Indeed, I understand totally that your patience is being tested. I understand totally that this is an assault on our democracy. This is an assault on the rule of law. This is an assault on our collective intellect. And of course, this is an assault on the will of the people, which by the way, is part of your fundamental rights in electing a government of your choice. Notwithstanding this, I believe strongly <clears throat> that as a nation, we can overcome, that as a nation, we have to pursue the course of justice, the course of ensuring the will of the people is respected, and democracy is celebrated at the end of the day in a peaceful manner, in a manner in which we are respectful of each other, in a manner in which we can all celebrate as Guyanese the common goal, which is to have the results of the March 2020 elections declared based on the recount in keeping with uh, the rule of law, in keeping with the constitution and the ruling of uh, the CCJ. But it is unfortunate <clears throat> that in this day, we have in Guyana a chief elections officer, <clears throat> Mr. Lowenfield, who believed that he can act singularly, who believed that he's a law unto himself, and who believed that he can subject the will of the people to his own fallacy and concorded plot. What Mr. Lowenfield is doing is denying a country and a people of a democratically elected government. What he is doing is playing a serious game with democracy, freedom, and the rights of the people. Indeed, what Mr. Lowenfield presented to GCOM today as his report is an insult to all Guyanese, is an insult to all the observers of the March 2020 elections. It is an insult to all the political parties that contested that elections, those elections. It is an insult to the international community. It is a direct slap in the face of the CCJ, and it is a direct attempt to manipulate and fraudulently present numbers that are fictitiously derived to achieve a singular aim of having a government that was not elected to be declared as a winner of those elections. It is no secret that the entire world, it is no secret that all the observers reports, it is not no secret that President Granger himself refused to be sworn in on Mingo's number. It is no secret that CARICOM, all other international partners, it is no secret that all Guyanese here and in the diaspora are aware and would have been declared that the mingled numbers were fraudulent, not credible, and it lacked any test of decency. It lacked any test that would allow it to be used in the decoration of the results of the March 2020 elections. 
For a matter of fact, this was the very reason that we are still here today waiting on a declaration four months after. Yet Mr. Lowenfield, after making three other attempts to subvert the will of the people, saw it fit to go back to those numbers. Saw it fit to present back those numbers to the commission. This, I think, is not only distasteful and disrespectful, but this really exposes the entire plot. It is clear that Mingo is taking ownership of those numbers that was concocted, concocted, sorry, that was concocted by Mingo. So from the inception, it seems, that Lowenfield was part of this plot that Mingo executed. And in trying to justify his actions, we're seeing a blatant and disrespectful attempt by Lowenfield to distort the ruling of the CCJ. But Mr. Lowenfield ought to understand that we operate in an environment in which information flows at a very rapid pace. That we operate in an environment in which the sharing of information is much, much easier than decades ago. And not only the Guyanese population, but the world at large are all in possession of the same CCJ, CCJ ruling he's trying to distort. He cannot continue to operate as if he don't understand this. It is clear that Mr. Lowenfield has an agenda. And that agenda is by any and all costs to have a declaration made in favor of the AP and UAFC. In all his attempt to modify the numbers of the elections, they all had one singular outcome giving a victory to the AP and UAFC. Clearly, this is a deep-seated plot, an effort by Mr. Lowenfield and others to derail the will of the people. We cannot and we must not and we will not allow this to happen. We have remained very patient and we will continue to do so. But Mr. Lowenfield must understand that there are consequences to your actions. However, we must not allow all of Guyana and all Guyanese to suffer because of this selfish individual and I speak here directly as it relates to sanctions. This singular person is exposing all of Guyana to sanctions that are unimaginable. As a country, we will suffer. As a people, we will suffer. Our life our lives and our country will be set back. This cannot be the future we want for our children. This cannot be the future we want for Guyana. So, my fellow Guyanese, as you continue to exercise patience, tolerance, I ask you to remain peaceful. I ask you to remain respectful of each other. 
Because the end results of this all must be that democracy triumph. Must be that the declaration respect the will of the people and it respect our constitution, the rule of law, and the ruling of our apex court. All of this, fellow Guyanese, is occurring at a time when our country and our people are faced with many, many difficulties. The COVID pandemic, for example, our efforts, our attention should be focused on ensuring that we combat this COVID pandemic, bring relief to families, bring relief to businesses, to ensure that we stem the spread of COVID and support those communities that are severely affected. This is what we should have been focusing on as a nation at this point. But the selfish act of a few is distracting us as a nation from focusing on the real issues and real problems. Today, as I speak to you, many families are without an income. Many families are without food. Many families are without the ability to pay for essential services. And we have seen no attempt to help those families. We cannot pursue policies and programs that will put back money in people's pocket. We cannot pursue, pursue policies and programs that will secure the day-to-day -day livelihood of people, that will return businesses to normalcy, that will return life to normalcy, that will stabilize our country, re-energize our economy, and put us back on a path of development. This is what we're losing. This is what is at stake. And to those <clears throat> Guyanese brothers and sisters who believe or who fall for the propaganda and the mischief, I say to you to think carefully. This is not the time to hate. This is not the time to feel excluded. Because I assure you, the government of the future, the government of the People's Progressive Party Civic, will work in your interests would work in every Guyanese's interest. Do not be misguided to believe that anyone would be left out of the development that will take place, that anyone will be treated differently, that anyone will be mistreated. I assure you that our plans and programs are inclusive of every Guyanese the reforms that will take place, the social benefits that will be distributed, the help for families will be for every family that deserves the help, will be for every family that is suffering. All of us as Guyanese will be included. So I ask you also to exercise patience and judgment, not to be misled, 
by anyone who perceive themselves to be leaders, but believe leading is about dividing. Leading is about separating people. Leading is about spreading hate. Leading is about spreading mischief. Leading is about using propaganda to influence people. Leading is about lying to the masses. This is not leading. Because sooner than later, the truth would reveal your motive. And then people would understand they cannot trust you. I say to all my Guyanese brothers and sisters, let us exercise our own individual judgment as to what is best for our country. The present situation has caused us tremendous injury in terms of our credibility as a country in the eyes of the international community, in the eyes of foreign investors. It has destabilized our economy. It has decapacitated many businesses. It has created many difficulties for us. Our focus should be on correcting these things. Not a continuation of what took place over the last four months, but a conclusion so that we can move forward in healing this nation, in bringing our people together, in uniting for a common cause, in, per in pursuing the agenda of an inclusive governance, in pursuing the agenda that would lead to electoral reform and constitutional reform, in ensuring that we pursue policies and programs that would enhance our economic prospect, that would bring back jobs and create new jobs, that would improve the welfare and well-being of our people, that would improve and ensure social services are available, not only available, but accessible, ensuring that medication and medical supplies are in every health center and health clinic, ensuring that life returns to normalcy. This is what our focus should be. We are without a parliament for over one year, without a budget, without capital expenditure, it is the country that is hurting. It is the people that is hurting. And this ought to come to an end very, very quickly. So in this regard, I want to call on GCOM, the commission itself, to do everything within its power to bring this to an end in a decisive and conclusive manner to ensure that this situation comes to an end in a decisive and conclusive manner in keeping with the letter of the chairwoman of GCOM to have the de declaration made on the national reconk exercise that was completed. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars on that reconk. We had CARICOM, sacrifice, sacrifice from CARICOM, sacrifice from observers, the business community, civil society, religious organization, people in the diaspora, all playing a part 
the media, journalists, cost us a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy. And all of us were on the same common page that at the end of it, we will have no issues in having a declaration so that our country could have moved forward. Yet we are still here today. It is time she come act in a conclusive and decisive manner and to bring this to an end so that our energies can be directed collectively to the singular task of moving our country forward in the interests of every Guyanese. Thank you. Mark. Thank you, Your Excellency, President elect Dr. Irfan Ali. Guyanese, this political impasse, or some may call it the electoral impasse, has affected not only the economy, but continues to pose a challenge to our security as a nation, our internal security and our external security. You're aware that we have challenges pertaining to both our internal and external security. And you are aware that there's been an increase in robberies as I speak. And this can be linked to the electoral impasse in our country. As the president-elect mentioned, our people are suffering, especially as it pertains to the pandemic, the COVID-19, simply because the government's response to this pandemic has been ineffective. We have a government, an illegitimate government, that continues to hold on to office after losing the election. And therefore, their focus is on remaining in office after they would have lost the elections. And this will affect and has certainly affected their, their posture in dealing with the pandemic and with dealing with the challenges to security of our nation. We wish to commend our security forces, both the Ghana Defense Force and the Ghana Police Force for their efforts and ask that they continue to be professional and continue to follow lawful orders. We wish to commend the people of Guyana for being calm so far and to continue to follow the orders, lawful orders, continue to follow the laws of Guyana because our approach to a solution to this political impasse is embedded in the laws of Guyana. We are lawful people and we will respect the rule of law. And therefore, as you heard, our president-elect is appealing to GCOM to use whatever lawful means are at their, in their possession to bring to an end this political impasse, this electoral impasse in our country. We ask you, the people of Guyana, as I said before, Continue to be calm. There's no need for any protests or any violence. Let us allow a couple more days for GCOM to bring to an end this electoral issue and to have a declaration. So our president-elect can be properly assume his office as president of Guyana. We've come a far way. We've suffered a lot over the last 130 days. We had an election on the 2nd of March. And like in many countries, within four to five days, we should have had the results of those elections. However, let us give GCOM, my understanding is that GCOM will be meeting again 
on Monday. And let us be patient over the weekend and give GCOM another opportunity to arrive at a solution so we can declare these elections and have our president sworn in as soon as possible. We respect democracy. We will uphold the democratic traditions, not only of Guyana, but of CARICOM and of the OAS and the Commonwealth of Nations. These are all organizations that we are proud to be members of, be a member of, and these are organizations that believe in the democratic approach to governance. And Guyana will continue to be a democracy. Democracy must prevail in Guyana. The respect of the rule of law must be important to our Guyana and to whatever developmental approach we take in Guyana and respect of the will of the people is of paramount importance to us in the PPPC as we seek to form the next government of Guyana. A government that will be developing Guyana for all the people of Guyana. It doesn't matter whether you voted for the coalition. It doesn't matter what race you are. We will be a government for all the people of Guyana. And we will develop Guyana within the context of a democracy, not a dictatorial approach. And uh, as early as possible, we will, as mentioned in our manifesto, be looking at issues of electoral reform and constitutional reform. Those are very important to us as we seek to govern Guyana over the next five years. Thank you. Yes, uh I know many Guyanese would have been asking where this head to and the end results. Well, it is very clear, and I just want to say this in my concluding remarks, it is very clear that the chairwoman of GCOM requested from Mr. Lowenfield the report based on the recon figures, based on the 10 certificates that were derived from the recon exercise. All of us are aware what are the results on those 10 certificates. All of us are aware the results of the recon exercise. And that results shows that the People's Progressive Party Civic that result shows very clearly that the People's Progressive Party Civic would have won these elections by more than 15,000 votes. So when you ask what is the end of this all, we just have to refer to the request of the Commission through a letter from the Chair of GCOM to Mr. Lowenfield, and that letter made it very clear that the report must be presented must be prepared based on the recount figures, based on those 10 certificates. And we all know as a nation, the entire international community, CARICOM, our regional partners, and everyone are aware as to what the results of those certificates will, will uh, produce. And that is the truth, the will of the people, and the People's Progressive Party Civic would have won these elections. So let us continue. Patience is virtue. It's a blessing for us to be patient. I know how difficult it is. I know how hard it is. But I ask all of us to walk to the finish line with our chest up. Embrace each other. To our supporters, continue to reach out. To the supporters of the AP and UFC, let them understand that you supported a government for all of Guyana. Let them understand that you supported a government that would work in the interests of all of us as Guyanese. 
because that is the only way we can move forward as a country. Thank you very much. Continue to stay safe and God bless you.